All right, I'm back. My pen works again. I'm not sure whether you guys prefer the pen or the typing. Uh, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I have a little bit more to do when I have the pen. Um, but uh, my notes are definitely clearer when they're typeset. Right, that's, that's a nice and good-looking equation there. Anyway, uh, if you want to leave a comment or let me know via email or via posting on the discussion board what you prefer, um, I could start doing what you guys want. That's totally fine with me. Okay, so we're talking multiple regression. That's where we are now. Multiple regression. It's amazing. We haven't done much with it, but if you've watched any of the practice problems, you can start to see there's cool stuff you can do, right? You can figure out uh, car prices or housing prices, um, how much you should expect to pay for an extra bedroom, right? You can. The wage equation is something I keep bringing up. The wage equation is very famous because people want to know how to make more money. Quest bang. How do you do it? Um, turns out, what, you know, education helps, it seems like. Maybe. It's hard to know. If you could figure out the wage equation, make a lot of money, become very famous. We'll try to figure it out. Um, but yeah, multiple regression how, is how we do all this stuff. Okay, now what? What do we? Where do we leave off? Well, we left off with uh, assumptions on the error term. I didn't talk about that. So we have assumptions, and what do I mean by error term? Well, let me draw my model again. Here's the model for now: y equals beta zero plus beta one x one plus beta two x two plus dot dot dot. I'm pretty fast with the typewriter, but I feel like I'm still much faster. The typewriter, the keyboard. I mean, on the computer, I'm not using a typewriter still feel like I'm a little fast for the pen. Anyway, that's our model. Y is related to all these X's, um, and there's some with some error. It's a stochastic relationship. Uh, but these betas they quantify this, uh, the population, the relationship in the population. Um, what, is our, what are assumptions? We assume we're making assumptions about, about epsilon. We assume, the short way to put this is that, well, epsilon is IID normal with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. IID right here, this means independent, independently, identically distributed. In stat, especially if you get to higher level stat or doing more uh, econometrics, you'll see IID a lot. Um, but it's, this contains a lot of assumptions right here. That this means this uh, squiggle means is distributed. Um, so I'm saying it distributed twice. Probably shouldn't do that. This n means it's normal. Um, and then uh, zero is the mean, expected value, and sigma squared is the variation. This means that we think that. Um, epsilon always is drawn from something that looks like this. Uh, this is the distribution of epsilon. The mean is always in zero, and the variance is always given by sigma squared, um, which is fixed across uh, our, our, our observations, right? And it's independent, which means that um, knowing something about any one uh, error term doesn't tell you anything else about any other error term. This is almost certainly violated in lots of cases, right? This is a, this is a very strict assumption. Um, that's okay. It, 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 it's a decent approximation, even when it's not um, when it's not perfectly satisfied. Uh, it'll still the the conditional mean function is still a conditional mean function. The main problem is uh, our test of significance will be will be our our standard errors will be wrong. Um, that's the main problem, unless there's some particular bias. You can have bias, um, but that's usually not coming from your error term. So the, the main problem that you would get is that your standard errors would be wrong. But your estimates, your Bs, would still be okay. Um, the question, it would just be hard to know whether they were significantly different from zero or what have you. Okay, so those are the assumptions we're using. Um, as I said, as I said, they're, they're violated in lots of cases. Looking at when they're violated and how to account for that is a, is a whole other thing. But we need those assumptions in order to talk about tests of significance. So the first test of significance I'm going to show you is our F test uh, of overall or joint significance or joint significance. And this is kind of an important one. 
because it answers the question. Uh, I don't really need that last thingy. It answers the question, does our regression do anything of value? <laughs> um, and now we're putting our hypothesis testing hats back on, which means we want to hew to our five-step approach. Remember, step one is to formulate our hypotheses. And an F-test always has the same hypotheses. That's the nice thing here. It is that all the betas, except for the first one, are equal to zero, however many you have. So the general way to write this is like this. Beta 1 equals beta 2 equals dot 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 equals beta k equals 0. They're all equal to 0, meaning there's no relationship between anything in our model and y. They're just unrelated. Our alternative is that one or more coefficients, one or more slope terms, is non-zero. Something has some effect on y as our alternative, essentially. Okay, step two is pretty standard as usual, right? You choose, uh, or no, yeah, you choose a level of significance. Uh, most common as usual, uh, or the most usual is 0 0.05, so maybe we'll stick with that. In any case, step three is our choose a test statistic. Well, the F test statistic looks like this. F equals MSR over M. SE. It's really a test of variances. Um, and the MSR and the MSE um, under the null should be roughly the same. Right? Meaning that the regression does a no, no better job than just the error of uh, estimating the variance of the, of the, of the regression. Uh, if you want to look in your book, it goes into the intuition of this in a little bit more depth. Um, but for our purposes, just knowing how to calculate it is, is perfectly fine. Under the null, this has k degrees of freedom, where k is the number of regressors, the number of x's, and not observations of x, but the actual types of x's, so however many types of variables you have. So if you were regressing income on age, education, and experience, that k would be 3. And then as n minus has k degrees of freedom in the numerator and n minus k minus one degrees of freedom in the denominator, and it is going to always be an upper tail test. Okay, and that's all there is to an F test. Um, we need to practice, and 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 we will practice. Um, and I'll post videos with practice problems, uh, but for just how to do it. Uh, th those are what you need to know. Um, step four, well, you get this stuff from the output. You get MSR and MSE from the output. And you, it's easy enough to calculate. You get K and N minus K minus one from uh, this, you know, the K comes right from the model and N comes from, you know, the sample. And then step five is is typical. You, you know, you look on an F, use the F table. You find your number of degrees of freedom uh, and you bound them. If you can use Excel, Excel can actually come up with your p-value for you. Uh, exactly right because Excel has pretty good statistical tools or decent it depends on what, how people how what people think of is pretty pretty good okay but that's an F test of overall significance um, oh maybe a little bit of interpretation there if you if you fail to reject the null then you can't conclude that any of the betas have any effect um, if you uh, do reject the null then you know that there's some effect this regression has some explanatory power of value okay our next test is the T test we learned how to do this for one uh, variable, but it's really the same. So this is for individual significance. And you can do a t-test for every, uh, not for, this is of, t-test of individual significance. Sorry, you can do a t-test for every parameter you have. Um, step one here is for any parameter, b sub i, or beta sub i, I'm sorry. We're going to have a null. And the null is going to be that uh, beta sub i equals 0. And the alternative is going to be that beta sub i does not equal 0. That's, you know, like a research hypothesis. You're trying to prove that uh, xi has some effect on y. Um, and that's what you'll prove with this. Step two again, choose your alpha. Step three is your test statistic. T, in this case, is always going to be B sub I over S sub B sub I. And if you want, you can do B sub I minus beta zero, and that will allow you to use T tests for something other than this, because you could throw anything in here if you want to. 
most of the time, certainly what Excel is doing is it's assuming that you're testing against the null that beta is equal to zero. But if there's some theoretical reason, like you want to test to see if uh, an industry has constant returns to scale or something, then you might be testing to see if beta is equal to one um, or something like that. Okay, now under the null, this is uh, distributed with T with N minus K minus one degrees of freedom. And in this case, well, it's always going to be two tail, right? Because uh, it's just a T test. It's just the t test like we've done before, and you can do you know k plus one of these, and and, and every uh, piece of Excel output will have k plus one of these. Okay, now four. Well, you know you'll get b i and s and the s b sub i is the standard error from your uh, from your output, and then step five, well, you'll use your t table, or again you can use um, equals t dist in Excel. I think this one is equals F dist. And if you look in there, I happen to know that for T dist, what you need is you need to put your value, your positive value of T first, and then your degrees of freedom. It won't take a negative value over here. And then the number of tails. I forget what it is for uh, for F dist, but, but um, Excel has pretty good kind of tool tips to walk you through that. Okay, those are tests of individual uh, tests of significance um, and the assumptions on the error term. We're going to talk about categorical independent variables, also known as dummy vari or use dummy variables. Uh, we'll talk about those next, but uh, I'm going to take a little break before we do that because uh, you should definitely watch some practice stuff before you get to the dummy dummy variable stuff. So, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I'll be back in touch shortly. Bye, guys.